Hi, everyone. It's the Agna Hochul Lady broadcasting live here at Shanti Atlanta, located in Conyers, Georgia. And I'm so happy to be with you this Saturday at 7 p.m., wherever you're viewing the show. Um, started a few minutes late. I had a long day, very busy day, but I'm ha happy to be here to, um, for yet another great episode sharing information about Agna Hotra and other ancient Ayurvedic um, uh, wisdom that, that I've learned throughout the years from my teacher, Sri Charles Davis. And I believe he will be joining us tonight. Um, Sri Charles runs um, Shantyville Institute. Um, and that's located in Tuskegee, Alabama. Um, Shanti Atlanta is the Atlanta campus of Shanti Villa. So um, as always, we're gonna start off with Varuti Mantra um, to give a blessing for the q and I will post um, the link. Um, so if you all want to join the Q&A on Zoom, you can just join with audio and ask any questions or you can post questions on Facebook. So let's get started with the Varuti Mantra. So, um, as most of you know, I teach Agna Hocha, which is an Ayurvedic um, practice that's done in a copper pyramid that brings about purification for the planet and for yourself. And so the basis of all the talks I talk about are Agna Hotra and various um, Ayurvedic teachings that can help you live a beautiful, fruitful, peaceful life, um, stress-free. That's what we're aiming for, right? With all these things that are happening. I do wanna say to, and I did post um, for anyone that's in Oregon, Washington, and California, I have friends um, in all three places. Um, I'm sending out love and light, hoping that um, everything turns out okay. I know that in Washington, they had to do some um, evacuations today. So anyway, so um, if you can check in on Facebook saying that you're safe. I know some people have marked themselves safe in Oregon um, the other day. Um, but anyway, just let me know. Um, that would be great. So I'm going to go ahead and post the link and let people um, get on to the Facebook Live. <clears throat> I do this every Saturday at 7 p.m. Um, and it lasts approximately an hour. Um, Agner Hotra Sunset starts a little bit earlier, so I don't necessarily do a full hour if I'm trying to. Um, be enough time to do Agna Hocha. So actually, let me set my alarm for that so that way I can make sure that, um, yeah, so it'll be a little earlier today. So I, I have a lot to cover. Um, let me just look at the time. Sunset here in Atlanta is 746. So let me go ahead and jump right into it. Let me post the, um, the Zoom link. So welcome everyone, let me do this because sometimes I forget to do that <laughs> and then people are not able to post their questions. Okay. Okay. And then you're also welcome to um, send donations. Um, my Cash app is, if I dare, I just posted the, the Zoom information. My cash app is do, uh, dollar sign Shanti, C H A N T I, Shanti D D E E, Shanti D. And I'm also on PayPal. Um, you can, my PayPal is Shanti Atlanta Center at Gmail if you want to send something um, through those things if you care to make a donation. Um, okay, let's see. So we did that. So let me just wait a couple seconds for everyone to come on. I'm just gonna share it to a couple of pages. So give me a second. Um, and then let me see if she Charles is gonna come on. I, I think he is gonna come on. So I will wait 
a couple minutes, but welcome everyone. Hope you're having a, a wonderful Saturday. Um, okay, let me share. Okay, here we go. Share a couple other little places and then we can go ahead and get started. And if Sri Charles comes on, then he would just jump in. Um, okay, let's see here. Okay, Shanti. Okay, so I'm sharing to our couple pages here. I'm trying to give Sri Charles a little time to see if he's going to come on. I believe he was going to come on. So, okay, let me share to one more place and then we can get started here. And so today's talk, we're going to talk about um, beyond the five senses. We're going to talk about um, the elements and how it relates to agnihotra. And I'm also going to demonstrate a um, another mudra. I know we, I, we did a couple of mudra demonstrations beforehand. And so um, I want to do another one. And then what else are we going to talk about? Um, and then we're going to talk about the power of forgiveness. So those are the topics tonight that, that we're going to talk about. And um, these are, and usually these talks are based on conversations that me and Sri Charles uh, have throughout the day, each day. And um, I like to share those conversations with everyone um, because they're very good conversations, <laughs> very good conversations. And um, yeah, I enjoy um, sharing information. So um, let me share one more page and then we can get started. Okay, okay, so this is the Agnew Holder Lady Show, and like I said before, I talk about various ancient Ayurvedic teachings, teachings that can bring about great joy and love in your life. Um, as always, uh, I talk about things to ease away the chaos um, that you may be experiencing um, due to all the things that are happening. Um, and a lot of these things are distractions to keep you away from really working on yourself and getting to the, the best version of yourself that you can be. So remember that, you know, looking at too much of these things and getting distracted by all of these headlines can, can have negative effects. And so a lot of what I teach um, during the show is there are specific techniques to ease the tension and stress um from day-to-day -day activities because those are the things that really break down in your immune system um, a lot of people are having um, um depression issues and things like that because of the social distancing and people don't have jobs and things like that but really um you want to be able to have happiness no matter what's happening outwardly in, in your life happiness has to be something that you work for this inside it has nothing to do with outside things um because outside things change constantly so you know you definitely want to be cultivating a sense of happiness that has no attachment to other things that's really what true happiness is other things material things outside things are changeable <laughs> as we know things change day to day now when you look at tv so you have to have a way to cope in a way to cultivate happiness without depending on outside things. And that's what Ayurveda is all about. And that's what I, I teach here at Shanti Atlanta. So now when we talk about the five senses, which is the first topic, you know, we're talking about things that you that you know by observing with your eyes, you taste something, you smell something, you feel something. You know, we have these five senses. And that's how we really identify who we are as humans through what we see, what we hear, okay? This is how we process things, you know, as humans. But um, in Ayurveda, uh, and many ancient teachers talk about, there's 
five other senses beyond the five senses. And you can tap into those senses if you do a lot of meditation, um, if you do a lot of deep breathing, and if you just sit still. So the Cosmic Clinic, um, as we talked about several episodes ago, these are times throughout the day in which you're quiet and you get a boost to your immune system and you get a boost of energy to your being just by sitting still at these times and they're three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, um, uh, um, yeah, five o'clock, sunrise, 10 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., then again at sunset. So, you know, we do fires do at those times. You don't have to sit and do a fire like I've said before. You can just sit still. And during those times, if you do this frequently enough and you sit still long enough, you can activate other senses beyond the five senses. And many teachers and groups have talked about this. I mean, this is not something new. So what some of us may ignore uh, really is intuition. Um, some people may have um, dreams that come true. Some people may be able to do distant healing. Um, and these are things that have been gone on for many centuries. Many yogis and ancient teachers have known that developing beyond your five senses is really going into a level that's beyond your body, beyond the mind, and beyond the intellect. So last week I talked about having a balance between your intellect and mind in terms of um, talking, uh, positively and doing good deeds and the, the type of karma that comes about when you um, do these things. So what we're talking about is when you sit still long enough, when you have purified thoughts, when you have purified words coming out of your mouth and purified actions, then we're talking about going beyond the five senses and everyone can do it. So people are talking about, well, you know, I need to be able to communicate with my cell phone. I need to be able to communicate with the computer. You can communicate any way that you would like because you are a human. And a human is filled with superpowers if you develop them. And so when you do the deep breathing, when you do Agna Hocha, when you do uh, meditation, when you sit still, when you do um, yoga on a regular basis, all of these things, they're meant to bring about a union of your body, mind, and spirit. And so when you do these things regularly, something happens to you. There's something beautiful that transforms within you when you do all these things. So um, now when we talk about the five senses, we don't, we're not saying you're going to develop these superpowers <laughs> and you're to you know you're going to manipulate or use them or abuse them no this is this is meant really all these things are meant for you to be one with the creator one being one with the mother father god okay so and to deepen your consciousness because this body is just our physical body while we're on this planet there's a transformation that happens upon your physical death, and then you'll go into another um, plane of existence. But we'll talk about that <laughs> on another show. But I did want to talk about going beyond the five senses. And, you know, for anyone that wants to come by and um, talk about this more in detail, or maybe I can even do another episode talking about that. But it's very real. And I told someone, actually a young uh, uh, a young girl, about nine years old, that came over here. She was looking at, what was it, the cartoon Avatar that got released on Netflix? And I said, all those things are true. I said, we as humans, we've forgotten the powers that we have. And so I, and she says, really? And her eyes get so big. And I said, yeah, we, we have all these powers. All that stuff is true. All these powers. And so, and many ancient peoples have talked about this. So this is it's time for people to know that they're great and powerful 
and you can communicate. You can travel out of your body. You can do all of these things without our modern technology that we have in our society. There are so many things that you can do as a human because you're made in the image of the creator, Mother, Father, God. And if, you know, the creator is great, then so we too are great. And we're made in the image. That means we have uh, the same powers bestowed upon us because we're the daughters and sons of the creator. So um, now we're going to get into um, the five elements. Okay, so we've talked about the elements before. And before I get into that, let me see if anyone has come on here and asked a question. I'd like to pause a bit. Let me just see if anyone's trying to come on. Okay, so with the um, five elements, of course, you know, you have um, earth, wind, fire, water, and the ethers, you know, outer space. Um, and so fire is the only element that can change all the other elements. So fire is, is very special. That's a, that's a special element. And so with Agnihotra, which this is the process of Agnihotra, not this here, but Agnihotra, for those of you that um, are familiar, we do uh, specially prepared fry, uh, fire at sunrise and sunset. And we um, chant sacred mantras. And then there's a burst of energy that comes from the sun that interacts with the pyramid. And we put dried cow dung, um, ghee, and brown rice. And there's a beautiful transformation that, com that comes to the planet from doing Agnihotra. So, and of course, this we use fire. So, there's some very, very good physics that comes about from using the fire. Since, you know, fire changes all the other elements. I mean, when you do agriculture, you are transforming on the, the, most, the smallest level, the very essence of things. So, let me repeat that again. When you perform agriculture, there's this miraculous and profound physics effect that's happened. And when you think of physics, things are, um, you look at things on the smallest level. Okay, so you are affecting things on a very subtle, very small level, subatomic, okay? And then that's when you're able to change the very essence of things. So it's a very powerful practice, agnihotra. And so if you practice this every day, what do you think happens to the essence of your being? The essence of yourself. Whatever things need to get cleaned up, get cleaned up within yourself. You become more forgiving, more loving. There's a physical transformation. Uh, you become healed. And they say that people that do agnihotra for a long time, the skin changes, your voice changes. You're changing the chemistry of your thoughts, how you think. You're able to resolve things better. You are changed, so you're not going to do the same things if you're thinking differently. So that's the power, the power of um, Agnihotra. And so fire is the only element that can change all the rest of the elements. And, of course, all the elements work in concert with each other. You know, just like humans, we are to be in harmony with our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, whether we know them or not. That's what Agnihotra is about. That's what about being a human is about. And so um, really living life is about transforming yourself, not staying still and always aiming to transform yourself. So whenever you sit in front of the Agnihotra pyramid, just think about the pollution it cleans up in the atmosphere. Agnihotra cleanses the air, the water. Okay, it's great for the soil. And it has a effect that goes eight miles up, two mile radius. And so this is a very this is very healing. And so when you think about um all the stress and tension that is happening in the world. Let's just talk about the different ways in which we could deal with them. So let's start with um, tension on your body. You're sick or 
muscles are stiff or there's pain, you use yoga. But yoga can be used for physical transformation, physical healing, as well as um, you know your mind and the spirit. So you use that to ease the tension of your entire body. Yoga, that's one of the um, uh, benefits of that. And then let's say you, your mind, you have a lot of thoughts that are just running around. Then we use deep breathing. And we've talked about, and we demonstrated, uh, I think two shows ago, some deep breathing techniques. And deep breathing also affects the body. It's very healing. It, it tones the organs. It flushes toxins out. So and when you do deep breathing on a regular basis, it too, it eases that tension, that stress off your mind. Okay, so now people are talking about, they're figuring out these, these fires that we're having. They have to deal with climate change, which of course these fires are adding to our pollution problem. So, you know, the air quality is going to be even worse in these places, you know, especially California already had smog problems. So now you have the pollution that enters into a, your, your immediate environment and the extended environment and affects your mind. So we breathe about 2,500 gallons of air every day. And so think about if that air is toxic. So agriculture is a way to clear that pollution from your mind and your thoughts. Because pollution does affect your thoughts. Let's think about this now. You're breathing air. You're eating food grown from a polluted planet. Do not think this does not affect your thoughts. We may think about, oh, we get sick or someone gets cancer or whatever, or heart disease from eating improperly. But you remember, we are thinking human beings. And so your thought process, that is affected by breathing in toxic air, drinking toxic water, eating toxic food, that affects your thoughts. And, we, and we've seen this too, I think in Food 101, they were talking about, they just changed the diet in schools, in alternative schools for kids where the kids were deemed bad, no kid is bad, and put into a special school. It changed the diet and the children's behavior improved by like 70, 80%. Most of them could go back to regular classroom or regular school. So that tells you the importance of having healthy food so you, your brain can function, so your behavior is, is peaceful and harmonious with those around you. So take it a step further into the air you breathe and everything else. And this explains why people are violent and arguing and different things like that, because there's so much pollution now and the earth is just trembling with it. And we have to do something in order to clear that. So with um, agriculture, that's a way to ease the pollution from your mind and your environment. And like I said, it goes eight miles up and two mile radius. And so the last thing I want to say about that is that um, also bad habits <laughs> that we have, maybe overeating and working too many hours or um, just being greed, lustful, things like that, that creates a lot of tension too. And that's where you have to have the discipline to ease that tension and stress from yourself, to not overeat, to not work too much, to uh, not be greedy and, and to not be lustful. And lustful is not just, oh my gosh, you know, having too much sex or whatever it is, lust can be um, becoming preoccupied with anything where it takes over your life. So lust is not just something related to sex, everyone. Lust has to do with being preoccupied with one thing to the detriment of everything else. That is lust. There's supposed to be a balance in anything in your life. So and greed, lust, envy, all these things, um, which is some of the, the crocodiles that attack us. And like I said, with the deep breathing, with yoga, um, with agriculture, it would ease that tension and help dissolve these bad habits. And we all have these bad habits. Um, so these are ways that we can manage. So 
let me pause a second because uh, we're going to end here right before Agna Hotel time. I wish I had a big enough table so um, I could do Agna Hotel on the table. My table's small. <laughs> so I can't, I can't do Agna Hotel here. Um, so let me move along here because it's 731. Okay, so now let's talk about forgiveness. Now, last week we were talking about um, various ways in which to um, be peaceful in your life. And we talked about um, uh, various ways in which to, you know, not gossip, saying kind words, being positive with your thoughts and having a balance between what you think, what you say, and your what you do with your actions. And that's truly being balanced. When you have a balance between those three, then, then there's a mind and intellect meeting of those two. And then you, you're not in conflict. So a lot of times <laughs> we're doing things that are conflicting. And that causes a, a lot of tension too. So we had to do those things that are balanced in every aspect of the thoughts, the words, and the actions. So let's talk about forgiveness. And Sri Charles and I were talking about, um, I mean, forgiveness is something, and I know some people say, you know, recently, you know, the young man whose brother was killed by the, the police officer um, that bust down the door. Um, everybody's like, well, why, you know, why does he always have to forgive? Some people were saying that. But why not? And actually forgiveness, people don't realize is that the entire planet, it, it survives upon forgiveness. Forgiveness is, is, is a potent, potent karma transformer. You can transform some bad karma just by having total forgiveness, sincere forgiveness. I mean, it purifies your mind because you, you're saying that what has happened to me is not going to overtake my mind, my thoughts, my life. I'm going to move forward with, with love and forgiveness. And then the person that you're forgiving, there's something that they can learn too. They may not learn it in the way that you think they should learn it, but then there's a purification that happens for them. And that's a purification that, that happens for the entire planet because the whole planet is held together by forgiveness. And I've talked before about the entire planet vibrates with our love vibration as humans because we're the caretakers of this planet, okay? This whole entire universe is built on vibrations, okay? And love is the highest form of vibration. So what do you think happens when you practice forgiveness? Like I said, that... I mean, that is some potent karma that you created when you practice forgiveness. <clears throat> and it has to be real forgiveness. It can't be like, well, I forgive you, but no, it has to be really like real forgiveness. There's an a, a old, a, I think it's a book or something called The, the Bishop's Candlesticks and an a, a inmate had gone out of jail. Is This is a book, I don't know, written in the 18 and 1900s. And he was a known thief, I don't know, maybe a murderer. And the bishop, you know, I don't know, somehow he got him, he was eating at the bishop's house and he just couldn't help himself. He just got out of jail three or four days prior. He ended up stealing some very expensive candlesticks, immediately got caught. And so the bishop immediately told the, 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 the law, you know, hey, I gave them, I gave them to him. Um, he didn't steal those. And so what ended up happening, because that was the bishop's way of saying, okay, I understand. You just got out of jail and you couldn't help yourself. I forgive you. And he let that go. And they were very expensive. He wasn't trying to get them back from the criminal. So the criminal, as a result, and I do believe the story says that he changed his life based upon that act of forgiveness and he kept them with him wherever he went to remind him of that act of forgiveness. So that's an example of what 
you are aiming to do, we all are aiming to do when we're talking about forgiveness. Because when we hold on to what aunt so-and-so did or what our dad did back when we were growing up or what the co-worker did or, you know, that she really ticked me off. I'm never going to speak to them again. Some people, you know, some of us, we haven't spoken to our family members for what, five, six, sometimes even 15 years. Is it really important? And I'm not saying you have to be around the people, you know, all the time, but if these thoughts consume you to the point where you're angry and you sweat and you have a racing pulse, then it does not serve you physically. It's affecting your endocrine and your nervous system. And it's not serving you spiritually. It's not, it's not, it's definitely not serving your karma because when you radically forgive, sincerely forgive, then you receive forgiveness too, triple fold. That's how that works. Okay, so we may not have time for the, the mudra demonstration. Um, let me, yeah, because we're running out of time. Let me, let me do this first. So in case we're running out of time, because um, Adam Hodge is at 7.46. So anyway, okay, so this is the mudra book, The Secret Science of Mudras. And we, I did like a presentation on this two or three weeks ago, but we sell it at shantidolaninstitute.com. This is authored by Sri Charles. I'm sure you can see this. And I think I've said before is that, you know, with mudras, um, you know, there are different placements you can do with your hands to affect healing within your body. And so on your five fingers, it represents the five elements. Okay, let's say earth, wind, fire, water, ether. And there are about 4,000 um, nerves that run from your hands to the rest of the body. So when you do these mudras, there's, you know, you're, uh, you're accessing the electrical system of your body and you, and you get this healing going on by doing mudra. So um, this is like our best-selling book. You can order this from shantivillainstitute.com. We also have Shanti's Ayurvedic Golden Nectar Plant Food. You see my garden pictures. Gardeners and farmers use this. This is formulated by Sri Charles. Um, concentrated at water. It increases um, soil nutrients, cuts your harvest time in half. The worms love it. Um, it increases plant yield. And then Agnihotra kit. I don't have time to open it up, but we have a kit that you can order. Let me open it real quick. What time is it? 7.38. Comes with the booklet. All these items out of copper. And then here's oops pyramid comes with a spoon um, and that's that so those are some items if you would like to support the work that we do we appreciate you purchasing so we can keep um, what we're doing going yeah art reach that would be great um, so yeah I don't think I'm gonna have enough time to go over the mudra so okay if anybody wants to do a private session um, and I'm gonna have to just do it. I'll, I'll take it up because there were two other things because I wanted to um, go over a, vet, a, a very powerful Vedic prayer that I have translated from Sanskrit. It's very beautiful. And then I wanted to go and, sh and demonstrate um, the Bermuda Mudra. So we'll do that next time because I'm, I'm running out of time. So let me see, does anyone have any questions? Um, let me go back here on Facebook. Um, let's see. Oops, and that's the alarm <laughs> for Agna Hotra. And I wish I had space to do it um, on here. You know what? Let me see if I can bring the pyramid over here. Maybe I can do it over here. Let me see. That's actually a good idea. So this is hot. So let me see if I can move this with the tongue. And then just do agriculture here with everyone. I think that would be a good idea. Okay. Never, I've never moved this thing like this, but let's see. And we can do this real quick. Okay. 
So yeah, I'm gonna try to do the egg the whole trip real quick, okay, everybody. So um, I'm gonna get the pyramid and and you can just sit quietly and then when the flame goes out, then I'll sign off, okay? Yeah, so we, I normally do Agna Hunter in a separate pyramid because the Agna Hunter ash is more potent than just regular Homa ash. Okay, so I think we can pull this off because it's at 746 here in Atlanta. Okay. So I already have my cow dung spread with ghee because I burn all the time. It's just easier for me to Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and so now you can see the process. Okay. So I have my rice. I thought I brought my rice in here. So anyway, you use brown rice for agnahotra. Just regular um, brown basmati rice. I mean I I usually, whatever I body eat, I eat rice sometimes. So I just buy long grain brown rice or basmati brown rice, and that's what I do. And that's what it looks like. And all the things that we use for Agna Hunter are copper. Okay, so now, so I put, let me see. I don't know if you can see how I arrange, you know, because the way, or the angle of the, I don't think you can see it. Okay, so um, now I'm going to light the fire. Let me move some of this stuff out the way. I got books and things that are flammable. I'm going to light. I usually have a little centerpiece that I light. And so now I'm adding ghee to build a fire because you want to have a little bit of bill. You don't have to have it like you're camping, <laughs> but you do want to have a little bit of a, a fire built. Okay, and so now I'm ready. So we have, what, one minute. So I get my rice, and I do everything with my right hand. So I'm going to say the Sanskrit mantras exactly at sunset, and then we will sit quietly um, here. I may not speak when I get off of Zoom, um, but that's how I normally do. I um, sit silent until the fire goes out.
And um, and if this is the time you can actually do a mudra while you're you're sitting in, in silence as well too. So we have a minute until. See, I got a nice little big fire. You don't have to make it so big. Yes, I did stick my hand right there. <laughs> I know somebody's gonna be like, "What?" Because something was falling, and I didn't stick my hand into the fire. So here we go. It's Agnihotra time. Agni ye swaha Agni praja pati ye swaha praja pati ye idam namama So I will be talking to you next Saturday um, for the next Agna Hotel Lady Facebook live stream. And thank you so much for joining me this evening. I'm hoping that you have a blessed and peaceful week. Thank you.